Thanks so much, Margaret, for letting me come to your home and speak with you and your kids. I really appreciate it. Did Frank send you? Well, no. Like I said over the phone, we did receive a call. Who and, called? Well, I can't really provide that information. So it was but, probably Frank. Well, like I said, I'm here just to make sure that your kids are safe and to, you know, help if I, if you need help in any way. I really just want to talk to you and talk to your kids and see how things are going. Sure, but I do have to be at work. Um, okay, so it, it shouldn't take too long. Can you tell me maybe how things are going at home? Um, well, let's see. Um, I've recently turned into a single mom and working two jobs. Kids don't have a dad. So, yeah, good times. It sounds like you're really angry and you have every right to be. There's so many things going on for you. I know that, um, you know, like I said, we received this call from the school about some things that are going on at home. So can How you... How the school know what's going on at home? Can you maybe tell me about what's happening at home? Well, my husband and I recently separated, if you want to call it that. Um, it's just really hard that all the pressure's on me, you know, with two kids. He thinks he's helping, but he's not. You know, he... Beth, can you please go take care of your brother and get ready for school? Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, yeah, it's just really hard doing all this by myself. Mm -hmm. He kind of comes over mm -hmm. at his convenience when he thinks he wants to come over. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, sometimes he's more of a hindrance than he is of a help. Mm -hmm. How often do you think he comes over? Well, he says he comes after school to be with the kids, mm -hmm. but I'm at work. I would assume he comes. Yeah. It's really hard to get anything out of my daughter. Yeah. Um, and my son, he doesn't really talk much. So... How were things when Frank was living here? Um, Frank has his moments. Uh, things were just getting a little out of control and I just couldn't have him in the house anymore. It was mm -hmm. too stressful. So when you say things are getting or were getting out of control, what does that mean? Well, he was always on the kid's case, nagging them, uh, yelling at me, demanding, um, feeling sorry for himself, well, get out there and find a job. I can't help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like he had a really difficult time finding a job and he's sounds like he's been out of employment for a while. Well, yeah, since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I get it. His job is very particular, but there's other jobs out there. Like, I can't do this by myself. What there's about rent to pay, groceries, mm -hmm. just things are adding up quickly. Yeah. And it's hard doing that all on your own. When he was living here, or even when he wasn't living here, what would he do when he became angry? Well, first it started with, you know, kind of always nagging me and poking me, throwing things in my face. Um, then he would be on the kids' case too, you know, get them going. Then the drinking kind of picked up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I get it, he's stressed, he doesn't have a job, but like there has to be a limit. I mm -hmm. can't live like this. Yeah. And that's, it's good because you've been able to recognize that it's maybe not, you know, the a healthy environment for you or for your kids. Was there a time that they saw what happened with Frank? Did they ever see him be violent? Or aggressive towards you? Mm. Well, Beth's in her room a lot, mm -hmm. um, but there's there's yelling, there's yelling and screaming. Um, don't get me wrong, he loves the kids, and I'm pretty sure he still cares about me too. But I understand he's going through a hard time right now. Mm -hmm. Have the kids ever been hurt during a time when he was violent or angry? I don't think so. Um, 
He loves our children. He mm -hmm. really does. What about with discipline? How would he or you discipline the kids when they do something wrong? He's really not around much to discipline them. That's me. But it's kind of a free-for-all with the kids. I'm never really home. Mm -hmm. I'm at work. Mm -hmm. um, Beth's usually really good with Aiden, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of him. Mm -hmm. I make sure that supper's ready and she takes care of, you know, helping him and maybe a little bit with his homework, making sure he's fed until I get home and then I kind of take over. Is there, that's a lot for a 15 year old to deal with and, you know, to be responsible for. Is there a way that you can, you know, work around your work or? She's 15. She's pretty much an adult now. She can handle it. She's very mature for her age. Mm -hmm. I know I was left alone when I was younger. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then, but how's Aiden? I understand um, he's autistic. How does she deal with him? Are there any problems? Well, they've labeled him autistic, but he's very, very smart to the point where he's like very smart. Mm -hmm. I think they call him high functioning. So if he's high functioning, how can he be autistic? Mm -hmm. Where did, um, where was he diagnosed autistic? Well, the school had some counselors come in and some psychologists. Then we had some doctor's visits. It was just a combination of a whole bunch of visits. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, I had to go with by myself because, you know, Frank wasn't around. And it sounds like there's a lot of school meetings. Are you able to attend those meetings? Meetings for what? Like, I don't understand. Beth comes home, she does her homework and being at work, how can I attend meetings? Mm -hmm. There's not enough hours in the day. Because mm -hmm. it sounds like the school really needs, you know, you to be at these meetings. I think they're there the school regularly holds these meetings to support Aiden, to support his learning needs. He has... Are you saying I'm not a good mom? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it would just be important for you to attend um, or maybe even find a way around attending or, you know, maybe giving your input into the meetings if you can't attend. It's just really important for you to be able to, you know, so this Include. is why the school called, because I missed a few meetings? No, no, that's not why they called. So the call that we received was really just about a concern for something that happened in the home between yourself and Frank, and there was some violence in the home. Frank can get a little out of control when he drinks. I get it, but he's got a good heart, and he's just going through a whole bunch of crap right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's somewhere that maybe he can see the kids that's not inside the home? So maybe, you know, minimize if he is going through a lot of problems, just minimize the likelihood of a problem happening with between him and you. And that's the problem. He doesn't have a place to live. He's bouncing around from friends. I'm just supposed to let the kids go to some random person's house. sounds like you're dealing with a lot for yourself like you talked about having to work so much having to come back from your jobs and then just take care of your kids and you know there's meetings at the school what about for yourself do you have any supports do you have you know any people who can help you well it's really hard because my girlfriends um i don't want to burden them with all this i don't think it's fair uh, my family's not here. They're overseas. And I mean, what's a phone call? Um, listen, I know why you're here. You're here to take my kids away. And that ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not, I'm not here to take your kids. Like I said, I'm just here to make sure they're safe. When we get a call, we have to go out. We have to talk to the I parents. know how this goes because I'm a product of the system. Actually, I grew up in foster care, mm -hmm. so I know what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can assure you I'm really just here to help you um, make sure that your kids are safe. That is what my job is, and 
I don't want to outside of your family, you know, come in and, and take your kids away. That's definitely not what we try to do. But I do want to make sure that you do have support for yourself. Are there any, you know, social supports that you access? Are there any any agencies in your community? Well, it's just being that I'm working a lot and then I have to come home, take care of the kids. It's really hard to, you know, make friends or... I used to do soccer mom, but, you know, can't afford that anymore. Mm -hmm. If you look forward a year from now, how do you imagine your family? What do you think it would look like? What would be going on? My ideal family picture. It's going to sound kind of silly, but you know, the house with the white picket fence and kids getting along, happy marriage, maybe a summer vacation, you know, everybody healthy, mm -hmm. no fighting, no arguing. Mm -hmm. Is that too much to ask? No. And you have so many strengths, like you are doing this all on your own. You're taking care of your kids by yourself. You're financially taking care of them. You're making sure, you know, they're safe and they're doing well. So it's great. So you mentioned you have family back home. Can you talk about that a bit? So I have a few aunts and a couple cousins that I'm really super close to. Um, they kind of know what's going on. They know my struggle, but you know, how much can they help? Their time difference, six hours, right? Yeah. When yeah. I'm working, they're sleeping, vice versa. But they tell me it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. They tell me, you know, stick it out, stick it out. It's going to get better. It's just so hard. Yeah. They're not here. I would give anything to have them here. Yeah. Well, it's good that at least you have them for a bit of support. Probably, like you say, it's not as, as strong or, you know, ideally you would like them to be here. Can you tell me a bit about when you came here? How long ago? So basically I came with my mom. Um, I was about seven and things didn't go very good with my mom. I was taken out of the home. So that's why I say I know the system because I was in foster care myself. Mm -hmm. um, and they were always coming around always coming around mm -hmm. asking questions butting in being nosy mm -hmm. well that must have been hard for you that's why I know why you're here yeah I see a lot of strengths in you though I see you know obviously you're a very strong person you are able to hold down multiple jobs and you're taking care of your family financially that is not easy as you know that is not easy and that's what you have to draw in you know in the difficult times if you can imagine you know what you want really want your family to look like in a year or in six months like what do you want to see changed what are some really good things you want to happen i want to have respect i want to be with somebody that's gonna you know love me respect me i want the kids to have a good home life to have you know nurturing in the home mm -hmm. um yeah i am strong i have to be strong i have to be strong for my kids they're the most important thing to me right now that's good that's great it's great to hear well thank you so much for talking to me I do really appreciate it hopefully now I can talk to your kids and then we'll just kind of go from there you know I want to make sure like I said that things are okay in the home that the kids are safe it sounds like you're doing an amazing job with the kids especially you know trying to take care of them with the little time that you have so that's great perfect